There you go. Do you want to introduce yourself, Mike? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, this is Mike England, who's just about to introduce himself. Whilst I have a cup of tea, there you go. <laughs> What's it all about? Um, yeah, I'm Mike England, I'm a painter. Yeah. Yeah. I've done it all my life. Um, well, it feels like most of my life anyway. Um, yeah. I sort of sort of come to that stumbling block as well, you know. You're basically the moment you're sat in front of you, one of your pieces of work. Yeah, is that quite recent? Why if I t take this off so I don't see myself? No, no, you, you've got to, oh. it's got to be like that. Okay. Afraid, yeah. right. Otherwise, it just points in the other direction. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's seeing yourself it makes you feel self-conscious. Well, look at the floor. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll block it out. I won't. Is there's one take and that's it. There's no rehearsals. Oh, okay, all right, okay. Um, so you're sat in front of a piece of your work. Is that yeah. recent at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, that's the the piece I'm working on at the moment. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm. But I mean, what? Um, I suppose if, if people watching this and are not necessarily involved with art and stuff like that, and um, it's quite sort of hip and trendy to go and buy a printed canvas which has got some sort of abstract uh, picture on it, all of a sudden, you know, which wouldn't have. Um, wouldn't have happened 20 years ago people you know people all of a sudden abstract is a buzzword you know but right. when you're at college say I don't know we, you're at college in what late 80s early 90s and you had to justify for example to your tutors why you were doing something that was abstract even if you were doing something figurative back then what would be your justification and what is the ideology behind say doing a piece of work like that behind you if you had to justify yeah it? Um, that's a good question um, first and foremost, I'm, maybe it's my personality, but it's like I'm single-minded, and so I'm stubborn. So I don't really care what people think, regardless what position they have in the hierarchy. You know, like in the, in, in college. Yeah. For me, it was just a studio, and I couldn't understand abstraction or the language of it. I couldn't understand why I'd want to do it, and to, it's a bit like learning to walk before you can run. So, and I still think you know hand and eye coordination, life drawing, and whatnot, and looking at the outside world is really important. But ab nothing is really abstract. The world is very abstract, but we we don't think it is because we categorize it in our minds in order to function. You know, yeah, so, yeah. Um, it's to make the world a very you know understandable, practical. It's our way of controlling it. Um, a tree doesn't call itself a tree. It's only man that sort of calls things true, things. Yeah. So, um, but I think the language yeah. of abstraction is becoming more familiar to people. People are starting to let go because people are asking questions about other things in their lives, about the meaning of customs and traditions. And that, so I think visually, and also because of the amount of advertising and visual projection from the media, yeah. and now with cameras and whatnot, everybody's sending, people are becoming a lot more visually aware. So I think the language of abstraction is becoming much more in the realm of comfort for most people. All oh, right. Okay. So, if, for example, um, you know, you got the classic debate that pacing is dead. Has it actually really arrived at its deathbed now that the general public is accepting abstraction as a form of uh, making art, especially in painting, for example? Painting is dead. Long live painting. So they've always said that. Though, <laughs> but but are people going to be na naturally just what's going to yeah. be the next thing? You know. Um. Return to figuration. Painting. Be, yeah. For me personally speaking, I think painting has been um, a way of understanding the world, my life, you know, in relationship to the world. Um, yeah. And I've got more answers, I think, from painting. Just for example, say, if, um, while you're at college, I remember being at college, yeah. and while friends were, um, and contemporaries were learning parrot fashion, parrot fashion answers to questions so they can pass their exams, yeah. it, you know, you're, you're in the studio all the time just um, you know working on your own ideas trying to understand what it's all about because you're not under that constraint of thinking I've got to pass an exam you fine art there isn't a commercial market attached to it no like if you study true. graphics then there's a, you can become a graphic designer or an illustrator if you study illustration you can, can become an illustrator there's a commercial market at, you know when you finish college with, with fine art there isn't not in its essence, no. But I mean, I mean, there are people that do cross over, and there are people that yeah, use things like that as a yeah, safety net, aren't there? So um, we are where we're at. Yeah, I mean, I think it's in, I think it's incredibly um, brave in a lot of ways to um, be able to go and do a fine art degree or something like that. But I, mean, I agree. Um, but you don't what, think of that when you're younger, I, do you? It's just no. an extension of playing. 
when, in when, a way. What age were you when, when you went to art college then? Straight after secondary S school. St. Martin's, doesn't it? Now before then, uh, I was at Chelsea, did the foundation, and before then I did two years, it was art school, it was uh, PQC, and it was the most oh, unacademic well, thing, yeah. it's like the first year was undoing everything you learnt about school, about being conditioned in an academic way, and the second year was all about expressing yourself. So, it, oh, yeah. and then when I went to uh, Chelsea to do the foundation, it was a bit like taking a step back to school, because it was pretty academic. And it's also, art school is like a finishing for um, rich children, you know, children of wealthy people. You know whether they're lord and lady so and so or or you know it it, it has that sort of attraction because it is like a finishing school. I personally, I never I never noticed that. I mean, maybe it's because I was lucky enough to. Well, I think um, I think Java's cocker common people really yeah. hit it on the head. I know, but I mean the, the thing what I was going to say is that I was lucky enough to get a grant education, so yeah. um, the background thing didn't matter. But I, yeah. I, I was, you know, I was aware that you know going to art college can, can be some sort of knocking shop for. Um, rich people, you know. I mean, yeah. some, but we all used to get on with each other. So it's not well, I suppose even if you're wealthy, you count kids. What are you going to do with them when they get to a certain age? Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it just goes to show that art is important. For when people have got money and they're wealthy, art is important because otherwise, why would they expose their children to it? True. I mean, the, the investment side of art is certainly definitely there. I mean. Um, I think you're, you're looking at getting probably a 30% return on uh, investment at the moment in art. I mean, I think that's pretty standard. Is that right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and it's, I mean, it's something I'm personally looking at at the moment doing, which I think I solved. I right. um, actually make actually more than 30%, probably more like 35%. So um, uh, anyway, that's that's another side of it. That will come later on, hopefully. But um, yeah, I mean, for example, I think, I mean, I look at that painting, um, behind me now and knowing that I have spent you know eight years in studios in Sweden just painting like that um, people would say, people um, would generally say um, oh that can be knocked off in any time and my kid could do that and this that and the other but you know the, I, I know, <laughs> I know as, answer, as, 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 a, as I can smell it as a snore on canvas that you know that can take a long 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 time to actually reach some sort of fruition, can it really? I mean, well, I'm 50 now, so it would have taken me, what was it? No, I mean, I'm just talking like about that. 36 years so far probably, to get yeah. to that painting. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just talking about that specific painting. Yeah. Would it, um, you know, to give somebody the idea of, somebody an idea of how long something like that would take? I mean, for example, the Michelangelo Sistine Chapel took six years to paint or something like that, wasn't it? Or, right. Yeah, you know, people don't appreciate that. They just look at it, register it, and move on. Now, you know, that's, uh, I think paintings change because, it, in one way, the world has changed, mm -hmm. and I think painting reflects the world. And the world when Michelangelo was around, you, you know, four hundred years ago, it was a very different place. Roman, yeah, Roman Catholicism and yeah, rich paints. Paint. It's a very different world. I mean, they didn't have the internet in those days, and I'm sure with Michelangelo, he'd probably be a film director or something now. I'm sure there is different medium. There's different. Derek you you try and understand probably. it. It's like, Derek German. like reinventing yeah. the wheel. That's what we're, that's yeah. what every generation yeah. does. It tries to understand it itself by reinventing the wheel, yeah. and we all do it too. You know, hopefully. Yeah. But yeah, we've got the responsibility of surviving, and you know, and there is a commercial aspect draw to it. It's, but um, that, for me personally speaking, it's not about that. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah I sort of think yeah. seven and a half billion people in the world. Dan, you know, what's the, you know, what difference does it make if one more life? You know, it's like, I don't want to compromise it. I don't, I don't want to live in fear. No, I mean, we were touching earlier on, weren't we, about, um, you know, people not taking risks in their lives, about reaching the ages that we're at now in terms of, um, you know, possible midlife crises and stuff like that, you know. Not we're all on the path, we can't slow down. We've reached the pinnacle, now we've got to get down the other side. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I just think it's cool. I mean, I'm, my birthday's actually in a couple of days' time, but I think that it's nice. I feel very settled now on some, some sort of plateau, you know. I think this is one of the reasons you why accepted I've, switched, who you are. I've switched around and I'm not doing or not trying to prove that yeah. I can do the artwork yeah. as such. It's just trying a different angle and yeah. all together. So. Yeah. And that's interesting. I've got, it's a lot. It's a different learning curve. But, yeah, um, I think everything is interesting. Something, something Regardless, interesting. everything is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just your perspective on it, how you look at things. And it, you know, yeah, I mean, one day if I feel as though you know, painting, I can't do it anymore. Oh, I don't want to do it anymore. Then I won't do it. You know, but um, 
but it's a struggle until isn't it? it's by, yeah by it's only a struggle, struggle because you haven't let go but once you let go then it's easy in a sense because it means that you accept all the things that come yeah absolutely absolutely checking the time um uh but i mean it's i mean i i don't know about you but i mean i spent i spent eight years painting big abstract paintings um in sweden using using spectrum colors actually and stuff like that and encaustic and you know all the sort of all the sort of traditional um renaissance recipes you use for stretching up canvases and all that stuff yeah. but ultimately after eight years i threw it all away and um a it served its purpose but b it just looking at it just reminded me of a lot of frustration at the end of the day you know and it's just like do you ever feel frustrated about your work is that what is what would be classically the one thing you absolutely hate about your work when i don't do it uh, and do you, when i'm in the process of um i mean it always feels like an edge you know an edge of madness it's a bit like trying to sort of rise your head above the earth but being connected you know still staying connected <laughs> but that's the reason why homeland security won't let me in america right? because of my psychiatric history <laughs> hey, another label you see sorry you think yeah. different yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so um that is just but I, I don't know all I, all I can think of is you know I, I would go to the studio at five in the morning i'd leave at ten at night absolutely exhausted oh for absolute, sure absolutely absolutely hating, absolutely, absolutely hating what the I'm amount of times you work through the night or yeah. you work on a painting for ages and you work in the middle of the night and you go to bed sort of really knack when the sun's coming up yeah. you, you're sort of thinking oh great you can have a good night's sleep tonight you think you've made a masterpiece yeah. and then you go and look at it in the morning you think what the hell was i thinking what a load of rubbish it was it was <laughs> it's always the other way around for me I, all I, right I, i've always felt it was good right in the, in the first thing oh in yeah the morning, that's, that's and then and then and then get by the end of the day i felt it was absolutely bloody awful right or i just sort of okay i mean there were times when obviously you know it was good and you could go away and sleep on it and then wake up in the morning and look at it again with fresh yeah. eyes and think, I mean that's, oh, a, that's shit, a, about yeah, the yeah. paint about listening to a painting because then if you still feel the same thing about the painting, the painting yeah. then it's there's something in that and it's just time then you've got to allow the paint of my from my understanding from my experience yeah. it's about leaving it the painting as it is and leaving it to breathe and it'll yeah. tell you if it's finished or not or it will reveal what it needs what what it needs Yeah, I mean, I, I I know that. I mean, I've managed to get a lot of stuff on on a kitchen roll uh, back from Scandinavia, on the, literally on the back of a lorry on the, on a TNT lorry. I knew somebody who worked for TNT and saved me about five hundred quid. But I know that I've got a roll of um, paintings that are in my mum's garage, which I haven't looked at or touched since the mid nineties. But I know exactly what they look like. I know exactly what the problems are with them. You know. But I can't go back to them. Right. Do you feel like that at all? Any, any of you um, what you've done, or can you remember going right back? I think I must have another aspect of being have a ruthless, not ruthless gene in me, but it's. It, I always sort of liken it to giving birth to children. They're your children, your paintings, and yeah. they get to a certain point. Once they, you try to be a good parent. You try to do the best you can with them, and but now they've got to they make their own way in the world. You know, whatever that means, whether you know they're destroyed or whether they're sold or wherever they go. You know, it's not your. It's like you wish them luck, but it's, you know, it's done now because it was the process that was the important thing. Yeah. And whether you reach that point, you know, of, of what you wanted, it's, um, that's, a lear that's, that's what learning is all about. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. Yeah. Do, I mean, it, just look at sort of gymnasts doing flip-flaps across the uh, canvas. You know, they look so easy, but you think about the amount of hours that they have had to spend, you know, working, perfecting it, training it, you know, to understand to get good why you know what what gives them the edge what makes them good you know they make it look so simple but it's and I, as you said earlier the knee knee jerk reaction of um, of people is like i could do that yeah, you know yeah, yeah. it's um you okay. could say the same thing oh, no you couldn't say it about gymnastics no you couldn't some people you probably couldn't say i could do that <laughs> can you, i mean the only thing i was thinking about looking at looking at that painting now obviously when it's hung in a gallery space it's going to be completely different because you've got you've got a neutral white wall surrounding it and it gives it, yeah. the, gives it the opportunity to um actually shine out it's like yeah. i don't know if you were around when they had um a howard hodgkin show in this yeah. town 
and that you know I saw Howard Hodgkin's show at the Whitechapel 20 odd years ago and the, the fact that it was an absolutely amazing colorist really shone yeah, through yeah. but what they did wrong in this gallery here in the modern art one is um, they painted the walls grey yeah. and it absolutely destroyed the paintings right right know, right it absolutely destroyed the paintings yeah and I was just thinking I see what you mean what it sh you shouldn't have to consider the environment the painting should stand on its own regardless yeah. that's why I don't have any frames but I know what you're saying it has have an influence of the experience because you, you used to white spend, or grey or years, red or and you used to spend years yeah. building up the paintings and stuff like that. I remember but once just just um sort of oh, the, the, only, the only reason I was going to say it is because do you find it easy because there's so there's so much there's so much clutter around the work you're actually working on how how do you is it yeah is it easy but this or? is a smaller studio I've ever had yeah and yeah it does it's not really suited Right to um to big canvas. I'd i I'd, I'd like to have more space, of course. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. It, you I, know, you can only yeah. do what you can, can't Does you? You've got to carve out a, a way of expressing yourself. And you know, this um studio is at the moment it's fine. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So. I I just wonder because if I, I mean I, I'm look you're, you're looking at me, I'm looking at your work, and if I was doing your work right now, I couldn't decide. Yeah, I see what you mean. See, yeah, the influence. I know you have to be tunnel or not, vision. Or, I know. Um, you know, you put a lot of effort into it. When is, maybe, it, is it the environment that's stopping you from carrying on? Or is it maybe or is it the environment that's stopping you from finishing it? I see what you mean. No, no, it's not. It, I think. I suppose you just get so. It's like anything. You just focus. And you switch into that frame of mind where you just yeah. focus, and and all I see is the painting. When I'm working on it, nothing else exists. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yes, I wouldn't. I'd rather not have that. It's a bit like, you know, sort of narrowing your eyes. It's having tunnel vision, yeah. in a way, not to be influenced by, you know, the shelves and what's on around. Is it finished that piece of work behind you? Um, almost. Not quite. I don't. You see, it's always a balance, you know, between the order and the chaos. Now, where? How do you give a painting life? You know, how do you make it sing on its own? Because it's like, okay, there'll be that colour relationship and, you know, those things that you've got discord or harmony, you know, going on. And, you know, the marks of the canvas as well and the relationship between everything that's going on. But yeah. it, again, you know what I'm saying about time and listening to the painting? It, it tells you. So I, there is some, there are a few things on it which is a bit like, you know, the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And there's a weak link in there. But I couldn't see it before. But by leaving it and spending time with it, you know, just sort of observing it um, it reveals to you what it needs yeah, and that's yeah. that's a balancing act because it's like building a tower of bricks or something and at some point it's going to start to wobble so you got you, you delicately put the pieces on yeah, and it could absolutely. all come crashing down if you make absolutely, the wrong so yeah, it's about yeah, knowing it's when to leave and when to stop and and if you listen to the painting it tells you when it's ready when was the last time you worked on it and uh, yesterday last night oh, actually okay yeah. which bit do you do <laughs> that blue bit down there, but no, it's a quiz. <laughs> it's the, a quiz. the blue bit, yes, yeah, yeah. this blue bit here, and the circle, and yeah. all of it really. <laughs> no, that blue bit definitely works. Yeah, yeah. The funny thing is, though, it's like when you think that's what it needs, and you do that, then it, the whole thing changes subtly, and yeah. then it sort of says, "Oh yeah," then there's something else that catches your eye. Think that needs doing now. You start working on that. What else does it need? Then you just carry yeah. on. What, would you cons consider picture varnish or anything like that? Or, I mean, it's a classic, isn't it? Really, if people can see themselves in the reflection, they like it more. You know, sort of br fine brush, fa fanning brush strokes and picture varnish. You know, people like um, to sort of feel as though they couldn't do something. That's why. That's how they admire things because they feel as though they couldn't do it. It's yeah. beyond my reach. You know, like a thing about the gymnast. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'm going to. I remember this. this a couple, I'll tell you this quick story. But I remember when I left the um, studio in Shoreditch, and um, I had this painting. I, I had lots of paintings, and I was thinking, mm. I, I don't know. I did it as an experiment. I left it outside by the rubbish by a skip to see, yeah. you know, if people thought it was rubbish or whether or not, you know, what would happen to it. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I left it there. Then it was gone. And then I got an email from somebody uh, saying I found the. I put my name in, on the back, my phone yeah. number, and somebody phoned up or. They didn't phone up. They sent me an email. Sorry, and um, they just said, "Oh, it, I found this painting, it, whatever." And, and they said, "You know, they thought that it was wrong that it should be sort of by a skip, so they they could right. took it. You wanted, you know." Wow. Wow. So that was nice. It was it was just curiosity in my mind. I've been through similar situations like that, but 
when I, when I was last at college, um, uh, on my birthday actually, I, I had to put my. We were getting kicked out of our flat in North London, and the landlord came in. I had I didn't have didn't have a car or anything like that, but I just had a bin bags full of um, my stuff outside the back the front yeah. door, yeah. and the dustwing lorries came along, took all my belongings before I could get a car, so I lost everything. Lorries. <laughs> anyway, it's another yeah. story. Well, thank you, Mike. Not at all, Dan. Thanks that's, very much. Um, okay. That's been a good one, man. Yeah, that's that's good. Excellent. That was quite interesting. Yeah.